Most people know about the Webb telescope's breathtaking images, but few remember that back in 1929, when Edwin Hubble first proposed that the universe was expanding, many scientists <laughs> laughed at the idea. One famous physicist even called it annoyed the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. Yet, a century later, we're now in a strangely familiar position. Scientists are once again staring at data that feels just as outrageous. Take this image, for instance. An ancient galaxy that formed a staggering 13 billion years ago. Researchers expected something small, messy, and just starting to form. Instead, what they found was a cosmic heavyweight. Mature, massive, and completely out of place in what should have been the baby years of the universe. And here's the kicker. This isn't even Webb's first time catching the early universe breaking the rules. From the moment Webb started sending back its golden-hued snapshots, it's been poking holes in our cherished cosmic story. But this latest discovery isn't just about a few unexpectedly grown-up galaxies. It's about something far deeper, something that strikes at the very foundation of how we believe the universe works. A Nobel Prize winning scientist recently put it bluntly, the Webb telescope has confirmed that our understanding of the universe may be fundamentally wrong. And no, this time it's not about the size or brightness of distant galaxies. It's about a silent, almost invisible truth that could rewrite the entire script of cosmology. You see, one of the unshakable pillars of modern astronomy is the idea that the universe looks the same in all directions when viewed on a grand enough scale. This concept, known as isotropy, is baked into everything from the Big Bang theory to the way we interpret the cosmic microwave background radiation. The rules seemed simple. The forces shaping the cosmos act equally everywhere, so matter should be evenly spread, temperatures should match, and expansion should happen uniformly. For decades, that's exactly what we believed. Every map, every model, every lecture, built on the assumption that the cosmos plays fair. But a recent paper published on February 6th in the Astrophysical Journal Letters has thrown a cosmic curveball. Astronomers have found that the expansion rate of the universe actually depends on where you look. Think about that for a second. In some directions, the universe is stretching faster. In others, slower. It's like discovering that the cosmic clock doesn't tick at the same speed everywhere. And if that's true, then our calculations for the universe's age, and maybe even its true nature, could be wildly off. This isn't just an academic headache, it's a crisis. Because if the universe doesn't expand the same way in every direction, then the neat, elegant picture we've been painting for the last hundred years might need to be torn up and started from scratch. David Gross, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, didn't mince words. We wouldn't call it a tension or problem, he said, we'd call it a crisis. And when someone of Gross's caliber uses the word crisis, you know the ground beneath our understanding is starting to shake. To understand why this new web discovery is such a big deal, we need to rewind the cosmic tape to 1929. That's when Edwin Hubble, peering through the largest telescope of his era, spotted something that would forever change how we see our place in the universe. The farther away a galaxy was, the faster it appeared to be racing away from us. The implication was staggering. The universe itself was expanding. From that one revelation, scientists pieced together a simple but profound truth. If the universe is expanding now, then it must have been smaller in the past, which means it had a beginning, which means it has an age. And if the expansion is truly uniform, then by measuring its rate, the now famous Hubble constant, 
we can hit the cosmic rewind button and calculate the exact moment of the Big Bang. But here's where the trouble starts. Before the Hubble Space Telescope was launched, astronomers were already arguing over the numbers. Depending on which data you trusted, the universe could be as young as 9.7 billion years or as ancient as 19.5 billion. <sighs> That lower figure wasn't just awkward, it was impossible. It would mean the universe was younger than some of the oldest known stars, like discovering that your grandmother was born before her own parents. To fix this, astronomers developed more precise techniques, expecting the numbers to converge. Instead, the opposite happened. The deeper they looked, the more the numbers disagreed. It was as if the cosmos itself was playing a cosmic prank, giving different answers depending on how you ask the question. Today, two gold standard methods dominate the debate. The first involves reading the faint static of the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang, frozen in place when the universe was just 380,000 years old. Between 2009 and 2013, the European Space Agency's Planck satellite mapped this ancient light with exquisite detail, arriving at a value of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The second method skips the primordial glow and focuses instead on stellar beacons known as Cepheid variable stars, along with certain supernovae. Cepheids are nature's perfectly reliable light bulbs. The brighter they are, the slower they pulse. By comparing their true brightness to how dim they appear from Earth, astronomers can measure distances and from there calculate the rate of cosmic expansion. And that's where the mystery deepens. The Cepheid-based measurements come out at about 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, a number that flat out refuses to match Planck's more modest figure. That's not a rounding error, that's a chasm. At first, many scientists chalked it up to measurement flaws, hopeful the numbers would reconcile with better data. They didn't. Recently, Adam Rees, Nobel laureate and professor of physics and astronomy at Johns Hopkins University, put the final nail in the measurement error coffin. <clears throat> We've now spanned the whole range of what Hubble observed, he said, and we can rule out a measurement error as the cause of the Hubble tension with very high confidence. In plain terms, this isn't a fluke. The Webb Telescope's razor-sharp vision has confirmed it. The earlier measurements were right all along. The universe really is expanding at different rates depending on where you look. That single fact lands like a meteor in the heart of cosmology. If the rate of expansion isn't the same everywhere, then our most trusted model of the universe starts to crumble. We can't pin down the age of the cosmos. We can't say for certain how big it is. And an even more unsettling question rises to the surface. Why is the universe behaving this way? One tantalizing possibility points to the strangest player in the cosmic game, dark energy, that invisible force stretching space itself. For decades, we've assumed it was smooth, uniform, and unchanging. But what if it isn't? What if dark energy is stronger in some parts of the cosmos and weaker in others, pulling harder here, letting space relax there, twisting the very shape of the universe's fate? The implications are dizzying. If the universe is not homogeneous and isotropic, if it doesn't follow the same rules everywhere, then our understanding of physics collapses. Just beyond our cosmic horizon, gravity could pull in reverse. Light could crawl slower than a human stroll. Reality itself might not play by the same rules we take for granted. And yes, in such a universe, the absurd suddenly becomes possible. No wonder astronomers are at each other's throats in heated debates. This isn't just about tweaking equations. It's about tearing down one of the oldest and most sacred assumptions in science, the cosmological principle. Since the days of Copernicus, we've believed that no place in the universe is truly special. Now, Webb's discoveries are whispering a dangerous alternative. Maybe, just maybe, some places are more cosmic than others.